you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Live in the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego. And welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast, where we start the weekend strong by covering how to properly care for ourselves based on what works best for us individually and in order to chase those health, fitness, and wellness goals. And in order to live your dream life. Today, we're going to talk about weight fluctuations on the scale. Everyone says that they want to lose weight when it comes to weight loss, but what they are really trying to say is that they want to lose body fat, not just weight. When you step on a weight scale, it can sometimes be very frustrating. And for many of us, this endeavor that we're trying to do something with our body composition, it gets so frustrating when that scale number doesn't move. From day to day, it's not uncommon to see many pounds fluctuate up and down. You get a feeling of triumph and glee and happiness when you see that number drop and then only to be crushed the next day when you see it rebound back above where it was two days ago. What the heck is going on here? What many of us forget is that the number on the scale is literally just your representation to gravity and earth. How many pounds of force is gravity pushing you down on the earth? It doesn't tell you if you're losing actual adipose fat tissue, if you're dehydrating water from your body, if you're losing or gaining muscle mass tissue. It is just one very basic metric of measure of unit that can be used as as just one tiny piece of this life-sized, complicated jigsaw puzzle that we're trying to put together. One pound of muscle weighs the exact same as one pound of fat and one pound of water. Yet when one loses any one of those, a myriad of different results can happen inside the body and in your future. Although there are fluctuations from day to day that are body fat or muscle mass, They are almost always from day to day, super tiny fluctuations that added up over time become the body fat loss or muscle gain that we're all looking for. Those are small changes from day to day. I have to emphasize again that we're talking over long periods of time. You actually build adipose tissue or, or shrink your fat cells and empty your fat cells of fat tissue. Same thing with muscle mass, actually creating muscle tissue takes a long, long, long time. This is coming from someone that's been trying to do it for the last 20 years. You can put fluid into your muscle cells. This is called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy where your muscle size do swell. I don't know if you've ever experienced, if you do a nice weightlifting session and, and your muscles seem pumped afterwards, that is fluid around the cells of the muscle that are enlarging, getting bigger, but the actual tissue is not being created. It might be, but at a very small and slow rate. Yet when we look at the scale day after day, we see these fluctuations. These are much more frequent and rarely actually body fat tissue being lost or gained or muscle mass tissue being lost or gained. Think about the process. You are what you eat. Your tissues are made up of these little proteins that you eat and and some fats, of course, for the cellular walls and the fatty sheaths around your neurons and cells and, and all that things of that nature. So you have the food that you eat being broken down And then the carbs that you eat and the fatty acids that you eat, those for the most part are used to create energy in the body. The energy you use to move and to think and to digest the food and to live, the body needs to store that energy if it's not used. Most of us nowadays, we use up less energy than we consume, meaning that we have our energy stores slowly over time being filled up. Imagine... I like this analogy for some reason. It really sticks with me. Imagine that you're a construction foreman. You're building this huge building. You're in charge of building a giant skyscraper that over time it will deteriorate. So not only do you have to build it, but you have to upkeep it and you have to repair it. So this is like talking about your body. Of course, 
you have to have the building blocks, the building material to make that building go up and to, and to have the structure to support it. You have to also have the ma the manpower and the workers to do the work. And in your body, these are things like, like cells that build. For example, you have myoblasts that build muscle. You have osteoblasts that build bone. You have cells that build your skin, your hair, your nails. You have cells that help uh, reinforce and restructure your vascular system, your veins, your arteries. And every single thing about you comes from the food that you eat. You would need to have the energy to build all these processes as well. So your workers need the energy, your whole system needs the energy, all the way down to the old material that's not working. You need the energy to be able to get rid of that, break it down, get rid of it, and then rebuild it new, right? So you're building the structure. You're getting more and more building blocks and energy every single day. You're consuming a lot of energy and a lot of building blocks. Now, think of that as consuming your food. And if that moment occurs when you're getting more energy and more materials than the workers can handle, it starts to stack up and it needs to be stored somewhere. And this is where you accumulate your body fat if you're not keeping up with the intake. Now, in this example with your body, it takes way longer for the walls and the, and the structure and the foundation to be built this, than, let's say, the the temporary pictures on the wall, or if you put a refrigerator or a microwave in the break room, like these are all tiny little things that don't take a long time. In your body, that is the water weight. All these extra little things that don't take a lot of time, that is your body bringing in water, holding it. It's the intracellular fluid that you see around the cells. It's what gives you the pump in your muscles. And this is what you talk about when you're holding water weight. And this stuff can be easily absorbed easily excreted. It fluctuates a lot day in and day out. You're going to fluctuate bringing these things in and getting rid of these things much faster than building the actual structure of the building. Meaning as you step on the scale from day to day and you see these fluctuations, these are almost certainly transient fluids that are creating this weight fluctuation. If I were to step on a scale and weigh 200 pounds and then drink a gallon of water, I would immediately have gained eight pounds of weight. The scale would say I was 208 pounds. And then if I got in the sauna for three hours and sweat it all out, I could easily swing from 208 pounds to below 200. Wrestlers and fighters, they do this all the time to make their weight class. Creatine, the supplement creatine can, can cause you to hold water weight, but it's actually super beneficial because it brings water into the muscle cells and into the brain cells. What's good for your brain is good for your heart, muscles, are amazing for your longevity. So just because creatine makes you hold on to a little bit of water weight, would I tell them not to take creatine? No, I recommend creatine to almost everyone. Carbohydrates can also cause you to hold on to water weight. For every one gram of carbohydrate that you eat, your body also attaches two to four grams of water to that carbohydrate in order to help store the energy, which is called glycogen or glucose in your body. So that's why when you go low carb, you will lose weight very quickly along with a myriad of other complicated reasons. But if you go low carb, you'll probably experience a big fluctuation in weight down, especially if you minimize your calories and you increase your cardio. Now, is this a good thing in the long run? We've talked about that before, but is it really getting us what we want when we go low carb, low calorie, high intense cardio, or is it just making you a lighter person temporarily? and not giving you the health benefits and the strength benefits and the quality of life benefits that you're after. Well, it's probably on a spectrum and it's not a black and white answer. Going low carb can be extremely beneficial to one person, depending on their genetics, their lifestyle, their behavior choices, where they are at currently with their insulin resistance, or uh, if they've been increased with their sugar intake and their ultra processed foods for a long time, that could have a huge benefit going low carb. Yet here we are again, rule number one, you have to do what works best for you because you are an individual and there is not one person on this earth who is exactly like you in every single way. Hashtag snowflake. You also hold many pounds of waste in your gut and your digestive tract. If you have a bowel movement in the morning, you could lose pounds of weight instantaneously. Yes, 
You should definitely have regular bowel movements. No, you shouldn't celebrate the weight on the scale immediately after you have a bowel movement, unless you're like South Park Randy Marsh, who's going for a world record. Uh, then I guess you can celebrate, but unless it makes you happy, this is not contributing to your aesthetic goals. It's not contributing to your health goals. Well, it kind of is contributing to your health goals. Have a bowel movement, but you know what I'm saying here. Your weight is just your relationship to ground via gravity. You cannot quantify your self-worth or your success on your body composition journey solely with the number on the scale. That would just be like if you were tracking your financial progress strictly by looking at how many Venmo transactions you've had in this last month. Your Venmo transactions are definitely a part of your financial progress, and it's important to track that, but it is a tiny metric that you can use in conjunction with many other metrics that you should be measuring in order to help you know which trial and error decision you should make, uh, which strategy you should do with your investments in order for you to slowly put this puzzle together. Fluctuations will happen without question, which is why it is crucial for you to stay focused on your game plan and trust the process. Be patient. Be patient with the process and understand it will not be a linear game. I've almost never seen linear change in weight, whether it's down or up. It's always a battle of ups and downs and, and peaks and plateaus and all that kind of stuff. And it won't be simple. It's going to be frustrating at times. I can almost guarantee you that. So go ahead and just prepare yourself for a little bit of frustrating times, a little bit of trial and error. It's a puzzle that you're looking at that needs to be solved. It's not a problem. You cannot look at your short term outcomes. This will be a losing game with this mindset and this strategy. Most people that I see that are focusing on the short term outcome, they get so frustrated that they become desperate. Once they become desperate, they make super drastic changes that actually set them on a trajectory in the opposite direction. Maybe in the short term, they get what they're looking for, but it's putting them in the opposite direction. It's digging them into a hole that is really hard to get out of. And then it's just, it's a, it's a game of even harder hills to climb and more frustration if you do that. So think long term. So here's what I recommend to do. If you're able to weigh yourself consistently, do it. Uh, the best time is in the is first thing in the morning, right after you've gone to the bathroom. You could do this seven days a week if you wanted to, but only if you look at it with curiosity. You could do it once a week, every Monday. That works great too. It really doesn't matter as long as you do this consistently and you can look at the data with curiosity instead of emotion. So if you look at that scale and it gets you super defeated, it gets you to make you want to do something drastic, this is not the metric for you. If you look at it and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. I went drinking last night. I had a bunch of junk food and my weight dropped or I, or the opposite, or it jumped up. I feel bloated. I feel this. And you look at the numbers on the scale. If you just look at it and then try to connect the dots so that you can use this information to help you in the future. Awesome. Do this every single day is totally fine. It's a great metric. It's one metric. If the number makes you feel negative, sad, frustrated, exasperated, happy, if it's an emotional thing, don't do it. Over months of time, you can see trends happening. And if you stack this with maybe like a food journal, you could see how particular foods affect your weight fluctuations. If you keep a mood journal, you could see how particular foods and, and time periods when you eat those foods affect your mood and your energy. If you track your movement and your body pattern, fat percentage, uh, your muscle mass. These are all things that can be tracked with in-body scans or uh, dunk tanks or fitness trackers. Um, you can track your inches as well by measuring a tape measure around your belly button or your areas that you want to see change in. Now with all of these metrics, you can start to put the picture together a little bit more. I like to think of it as like your awareness when you first start is this tiny little flashlight inside of this huge, dark, pitch black warehouse hundreds and thousands of square feet big. You have this tiny little flashlight and you're trying to figure stuff out. And then as you get all these metrics, you start to open up the diameter of that light, or you start to get many, many flashlights all around and it starts to illuminate this picture. You can see which food consumption and behavioral habits that you have to take to get you closer to your goal. Or if you're going further from your goal, 
To me, the most simple way to achieve almost any goal that people have, at least the ones that come to me with goals, uh, is just to focus on getting stronger. If you have an aesthetic goal, if you have a health goal, if you have a, a strength goal, obviously, any of these, if you have goals, start by focusing on just getting stronger. It's so simple. Did you lift this weight today? Great. Can I lift a heavier weight next training session? If you focus on strength, almost all other body composition, aesthetic goals, they fall into place, especially for a newbie, a beginner. And then after a while, once you get to a place where maybe you really want to go crazy, you want to get to that top, top percent, maybe you want to do a physique bodybuilding competition and get to the highest level. That's when we can talk about splitting hairs and manipulating carbs and water and sodium intake to get you to that super low or, or challenging body fat percentage that you're looking for. But for most of us, right, if we get stronger, we live longer, we live healthier and we live better. And for most of us, really, this is exactly what we're looking for. All right, here's the blueprint friends. Here it is. If you follow this with extreme consistency, you will succeed. And I promise you this extreme consistency, relentless consistency. Number one, find awareness of where you're at. Get a starting baseline, measure your weight, measure your body fat percentage, your muscle mass, your inches, your daily steps, your average caloric intake, your average protein intake, your average water intake, get your blood work checked. Any of these are baseline measurements. You don't have to do all of them. You could do all of them and it would give you a better picture, but you don't have to do all of them. This is you putting your starting location into your GPS. You're trying to get somewhere. This is your starting location. Number two, find where you want to be. Establish where you want to go, your end location in the GPS. What body weight do you want to be at? What body fat percentage do you want to be at? Muscle mass, how much do you want of that? Where do you want your inches? How do you want your energy level? What do your blood numbers look like? Whatever it is that you want, you want to put that end destination into the GPS. So you got your start, you got your finish. Number three, Keep almost everything with your baseline the same. So continue doing what you've been doing, except for you make one change, one change that you can do consistently for a couple of weeks. Maybe it's adding a thousand steps to your daily average. Then only work on that goal for maybe like two to four weeks. Measure again your baseline. Now, same measurements you're measuring again and see what the results are. Did that change help you or did it hurt? If it helped, you know you're on the right track. Awesome. Continue doing that. If it didn't help, then at least now you know. Then that should also be considered a win because now you can check something off the list that is not for you. Continue to chip away one small change at a time. Do not make another change until you've made your previous change a habit, a lifestyle change. Yes, those four steps continued on over time will get you your goal. The hard part about this strategy is that it takes time. It takes time to build that foundation and get your average baseline because you, you want to get your changes now, right? But in order for you to change from where you're at, it's important for you to know where you're at. It's not impossible to do it a different way. This is just the best way that I know how to do it. It takes patience and it takes a little mental fortitude, knowing that there will be changes, uh, that you're going to make that don't work. Uh, there are going to be changes you make that are actually the opposite of what you wanted. But the amazing part of this strategy is that just like a snowball rolling downhill, like money invested in a good trust or mutual fund, this stuff, it compounds over time and it gets better and better as you go. And once you really find the sweet spot for you, it's less trial and error and more of your decisions are positive towards where you're trying to go. You get more educated about yourself as you go and you become a high performing CEO of your own health and fitness. So please, please, please take the time to start your journey off right. You can do this. Practice avoiding the short term gratification feeling that most of us go to at first. Lean into the challenge. When you're going uphill, if you actually accelerate and lean into that challenge, you will notice that things go your way. And honestly, the gold standard would be to seek out the guidance of a professional that can help you do this along the way. I mean, it can be done alone, of course. It'll just take a little bit more trial and error time. And it's 
still going to take trial and error time with a professional. But if you find a good trainer or a good health coach, nutritionist or doctor, they can help you get past those opticals with the knowledge and experience much faster than on your own. And then when you do make a move that is not quite going towards your goals, they can give you the confidence and they can make sure that you don't get defeated by letting you know what to expect. Like, oh, if you do this, it's probably going to make you feel this way. And when that hits, there's a little something more supportive in that than you just not knowing if you're on the right track or not. So, you know, there's, there's no magic pill. There's no easy hack or shortcut to this. And that should really be part of the fun of this whole thing. I know it sounds stupid, but it, that's the way I see it. I know that it's hard, but that's part of the fun. You got this reach out. If I can help you out with anything, I'm here for you and just enjoy the journey. Find something that you enjoy, do it consistently, track, make tiny changes, make it a lifestyle. And every day you make a decision, you're casting a vote for who you want to be. As long as more votes goes towards the direction of who you want to be and not who you are or the person you don't want to be, you will eventually get to your goal. Cast some votes tomorrow, make them more than the ones that are going the opposite way. I have faith in you. I know you can do this. And that's it, my friends. Thank you for joining me on this self-care Saturday episode of the Live in the Dream podcast. Share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps us a ton. It's a zero cost way to support this podcast and help us keep bringing out these episodes. If you could just take a screenshot and post that screenshot on one of your social media stories and include one takeaway that you learned and make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at living the dream underscore podcast or at coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have navigated the world of body composition change or if you have any experiences with weighing yourself on the scale and being frustrated with those daily fluctuations, any experience or input that you have to help those who are also navigating this journey would be wonderful. We want to hear from you. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your live in the dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.